Hi students, uh, welcome to one and all. In continuation to the interpolation, Lagrange's interpolation theorem, we will uh, go to the next theorem, theorem 8.3. The statement is given k complex numbers w0, w1, etc., wk minus 1, there exists k uniquely determined complex numbers a0, a1, etc., mm -hmm. a k minus 1, such that wn is equal to summation n equal to 0 to k minus 1 a n e raised to 2 pi i m n by k for m equal to 0 1 2 3 etc k minus 1 moreover the coefficients a n are given by the formula a n equal to 1 by k summation n equal to 0 to k minus 1 w m e raised to minus 2 pi i m n by k or n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. k minus 1. Here, the theorem is an immediate consequence of the previous theorem that is the Lagrange's interpolation theorem. Earlier in Lagrange's interpolation theorem, we have uh, studied that corresponding to the uh, complex numbers z0, z1, etc., z k minus 1, we can uh, have a distinct, uh, we have, can have a now complex numbers w0 w1 etc wk minus 1 so that uh, we can find a unique polynomial such as p of zj equal to wj and uh, here uh, it is something like a converse uh, part that is uh, corresponding to each complex number w1 w1 etc we can find k uniquely determined complex numbers a0 a1 etc k minus 1 such that wn is also summation n equal to 0 to k minus an an e raised to 2 pi i mn by k this is nothing but the fourier series uh, form this uh, wn is equal to is a fourier series form and uh, the, for the coefficient we have to take the inverse fourier series that is what the theorem all tells about so let us move to the proof of this theorem in this uh, theorem, uh, we have to take that ZM as in the previous theorem. We will take the ZM in the previous theorem as uh, ZM is equal to e raised to minus 2 pi i m by k. So the numbers Z1, Z2, etc. are clearly the distinct zeros of the uh, are the distinct uh, zeros of uh, e raised to minus i uh, is uh, are the distinct roots of the unity are the kth roots of the unity and uh, so the numbers is it not is it not etc is it k minus one are distinct and uh, uh, by the previous theorem we can see that we can find a unique a polynomial that is the Lagrange polynomial P of Z summation n equal to 0 to k minus 1 a n is it raised to n. Uh, this can be seen from the previous theorem by the proof of the previous theorem that uh, we have already written uh, this uh, uh, P of Z as a combination P of Z as W naught A naught of Z by A naught of Z uh, naught plus w1 a1 of z by a1 of z1 plus etc wk minus 1 ak minus 1 z by uh, ak minus 1 z k minus 1 so clearly this uh, polynomial uh, can be when we if we simplify this uh, we can see that this is a polynomial of uh, uh, degree k minus 1 and uh, this since uh, any polynomial of degree k minus 1 can be written as um, uh, wk minus one, some constant times uh, z raised to k minus 1 plus another constant times z raised to k minus 2 etc uh, another constant times k a z plus a constant uh, plus a constant so like that that is what it is written here that p of z is uh, uh, is written as a polynomial uh, of degree k minus 1 that is p of z is sigma n equal to 0 to k minus 1 a n is at least to k minus 1 such that 
this p of zm is equal to wm this n equal to 0 is a typo so the, please avoid this uh, uh, it's an error here so remove this n equal to 0 from here and such that p of zm is wm as in the previous theorem for each m equal to 0 1 2 3 etc k minus 1 so uh, as i said there are uniquely determined numbers a n satisfying one so the first part is over now we want to deduce the second part of the theorem that is we have to prove that each of this a n is of this form each the coefficient a n is of the form 1 by k times sigma m equal to 0 to k minus 1 w m e raised to minus 2 by i m n by k for n equal to 0 1 to 3 k minus 1 for that what we have to do is simply multiply both sides of the theorem of this by uh, of theorem by e raised to minus 2 pi i m r by k so what happens is we all know that p of z m is w m so we will, we will replace here as w m and we will write it as sigma and we will take the summation multiply both sides and take the sum on m you will get summation m equal to 0 to k minus 1 w m e raised to minus 2 pi i m r pi k so that the same thing we have to do here also sigma n equal to 0 to k minus 1 again summation m equal to 0 to k minus 1 e raised to minus 2 pi i n n m by k is already there from the previous theorem from the previous theorem it is already there wn we have already proved this wn is this one so from here here already n is there so we have to multiply it with e raised to minus 2 pi i r m by k so when we simplify that we will get e raised to 2 pi i n minus r m by k now by the previous theorem that uh, we have studied about um, a result in the uh, first section that uh, any summation which has uh, if a summation m equal to 0 if gn is of the form summation m equal to 0 to k minus e raised to minus 2 pi i n minus uh, this instead of n minus r there it was n m by k then we have seen that gn will reduce to 0 if k does not divide n and it will become k if k divides n similarly in this case if we apply that theorem we will see that the sum on m is 0 this will become 0 when this uh, k does not divide uh, k does not divide n minus r and uh, will become uh, this will become zero if k does not divide n minus r and uh, if k divides n minus r this will reduce to one so here also so we will apply that theorem in that case the sum on m is zero unless k divides n minus r so k should divide n minus r and uh, if k divides n minus r uh, but uh, here if we see n minus r what is n minus r n minus r is nothing we got n minus r is nothing but the absolute value of n minus r is less than or equal to k minus 1 if this is less than or equal to k minus 1 then the only way that k divides n minus r is that this n minus r should be 0 because uh, a big k is a bigger number and k minus 1 is a smaller number so n minus r is now a smaller number and a bigger number if a bigger number has to divide a smaller number the only way is that the smaller number is 0 no other way if it is a uh, smaller number we cannot divide that number so like that n minus r is less than or equal to k minus 1 so k if k divides n minus r then it will happen only when this n minus r reduces to 0 that is n minus r reduces to 0 means n is equal to r so 
k divides n minus r if and only if n equal to r. So here we have to replace n to r. So we have to replace this n to r or r to n. And in that case, this will reduce to 1. So this summation, this whole summation will reduce to a n instead of a n you can either replace n by r or r by n so here we can replace n by r so this will become summation this summation is a n summation is a r a r times and this whole term is one so since a r this is a r we can see that this summation will become k so finally we can see that summation m equal to 0 to k minus n wm e raised to minus 2 pi i n mark by k will become k ar. Okay, this will become, this summation will become uh, 1. So, 1, so 1 will reduce to k. This one summation, this one, 1 will be k. So, k ar. So, this gives the result in 2 that is AR instead of AR we can replace AR by AN also so the result is AN is equal to 1 by K summation M equal to 0 to K minus 1 WM e raised to minus 2 pi I M N by K so this is the result and I hope you have understood the theorem properly Thank you for the patient listening.